which belongs to a much smaller dinosaur called a Megathnosaurus. This creature stood approximately four feet tall at the hips, measured roughly eight feet long, weighed close to 70 pounds, and was equipped with strong, agile legs used for leaping. These predators tended to hunt in packs, a highly unusual behavior. Additionally, experts have identified Batrocopus tracks belonging to a Protosuchus. This crocodilian is approximately two feet long, close to nine inches high at the hips, and walked on all fours. Sedimentary structures such as precisely preserved ripple marks, stream channels, mud cracks, and salt casts left crucial information regarding the natural habitat of these magnificent animals. Enjoy your tour today. Delve into the early Jurassic world as you see first-hand evidence of these magnificent creatures and clues surrounding their intriguing habitat. I'm going to give one last tour or talk on these flying dinosaur tracks which you can go over there. Uh, this uh, uh, has to be for short and uh, uh, but if This is the this is the way the numbers go. Yeah, but he's gonna give a talk over here. Oh. This is what we call our squatting dinosaur tracks. Uh, the actual tracks are way down there by the second window from, uh, back from the end wall. You see that pile of uh, rope out there that's near the wall? It's kind of red and tan colored there. Just over the ridge from that pile of rope is where these tracks really are. I'd just like to point it out to let you know that they are here in the building and also notice that they're rather close to the wall. We had to get special permission to build a building as close to the road as we did uh, in order to preserve this set of tracks. It's only one of five places in the world with squatting dinosaur tracks. The other places, there are two in Connecticut, one in China, and another here in Utah. And what we have is the dinosaur is sitting or squatting much the way it is in this picture that I'm holding, and its round tailbone here made this round impression right here. The large feet made these impressions here, 
and down here like this. And the, the small feet curled up the way they are, made this impression here, and this one down here. Now I mentioned that there are uh, four other places with squatting dinosaur tracks. None of them have the clear, deep impression of both hands like we have here. I feel these impressions are deep and clear like this because I think the dinosaur was squatted down maybe eating or drinking or something where it had its weight forward and its head down. Well then it kind of pushed itself as it was getting up and that's what made these tracks so deep like that. But anyway, when it did push itself getting up, it moved forward a little bit and made a second tailbone impression right here. Its foot moved up to here like this and its small feet just barely touched down in these two places. Well then it got up and it started walking away. And this is its first footstep that we can see down there near the windows. And then where you see each of the yellow post-it notes or pieces of paper out here marks one of the materials as desert landscape materials and things like that. And so that we're very fortunate that he found it early on in his work of clearing the land as opposed to when he was almost done. Because if he found it when he was almost done, we would we won't even have anything to show you, or we'd be taking you on a tour of some place, showing you lots of people's front yard with dinosaur tracks. Mm. So anyway, that's a little background of, of what happened here. Our museum, uh, like I said, the site was started in 2000. Our museum didn't open here until late uh, April or early May of 2005. So our own museum is only about two and a half years old. So that gives you a little background of, of, of what was going on. Are there uh, any questions or anything I can answer before I leave?